Hey, set up your vehicle for full-time overlanding. Let's go. Okay, so I'm telling you right now that I'm gonna be making these videos in parts because there's a lot to cover to make sure that you are prepared and safe for your adventures and expeditions. And I wouldn't have been able to come up with enough jokes to keep you entertained for the entire video. Honestly, it's not the content that's hard. It's the jokes. Hey, what do you call a mushroom? The... Anyways, I'm not gonna be wasting your valuable time. Let's go. In this series, I'll be following the covering. <laughs> In this... <laughs> following the covering. In this series, I'll be covering the following. Vehicle upgrades, recovery gear, tools for maintenance and spare parts, lighting, comms and navigation, sleeping and shelter, food storage and water, power and electricity, fuel, and hygiene. It's pretty clear that I rank those in order of importance. Okay, vehicle upgrades. These are all the modifications that are related to driving, body, and frame components. Let's start with the suspension. Yeah, no whining and dining here, no foreplay. We're getting right into it because that's what we do. We're right to the point. Suspension upgrades. When you're going over landing, your ride is not going to be always as smooth as pavement. You're also going to be loading up your vehicle with cargo and other heavy things, and this is going to increase your gross vehicle mass, or GVM in short. Your GVM is the maximum allowable weight of your vehicle, including all its occupants, cargo, and your tow ball mass. Your FJ Cruiser standard GVM is 2,510 kilograms, or 55.33 pounds. I'm getting better at the conversions, eh? As you can see here, in 2018, my vehicle weighed in at 2440 kilograms, which is just under your maximum GVM. Mind you, all engineering specs are designed with a factor of safety of 1.5, so I was well within the limit, but don't push it. You don't want to be that close. So I was still running the stock springs and shocks, so naturally they were struggling. I was carrying too much stuff. My mass was too much. Me, my weight, have to lay off those Big Macs. Anyways, you're going to want to upgrade your suspension to be able to handle a heavier vehicle driving in terrain that's uneven or mildly challenging. Fast forward, I upgraded to 5100 Bill Steins, Steins? Bill Steins? And Old Man Emu Springs, as well as a larger and stronger upper control arm. And that would have helped me increase my overall GVM to a number that I wish I knew. I mean, in Australia, you'll bring your car to a shop and an engineer will certify your GVM upgrade for you through various component upgrades. There are more components that are considered in a GVM upgrade, but we're not going to talk about that for now. So please do your research and take into consideration all the things that you will be carrying with you in your FJ Cruiser. This will help you decide what suspension upgrades to go for. If you have no clue about this stuff at all, talk to a mechanic that you trust. And I'm, and I'm serious about this that you trust thing. Talk to a mechanic that you trust or a suspension professional in the industry. This is for both functionality and for safety. Don't overload your vehicle. Don't do it. Go talk to a professional. No, don't talk to me. Do I look like a professional? No, I don't look like a professional. How could I be a professional? Exactly, end of story. Next, we're gonna move on to roof racks. When considering roof racks, you not only have to consider the load capacity of the roof rack, you also have to consider the capacity of your roof rack mounting points. So the capacity of the roof rack itself is the load that the rack can handle before the rack components start to fail. What's equally as important to know is the capacity of the roof rack mounting points on your vehicle. Because not only does it need to withstand the weight that you're putting on the roof rack, it needs to withstand the weight of the roof rack as well. Side note, there have been a few videos circulating about Tyler Thompson and Ronnie Dahl four-wheel drive about roof rack failures. And that is why this is very important. They talk about things such as the static load capacity, the dynamic load capacity, which is the load capacity while you are in motion. And then within the dynamic load capacity, there is on-road capacity as well as off-road capacity. Naturally, your on-road dynamic capacity will be higher than your off-road dynamic capacity because driving on uneven terrain and hitting big bumps while you're on the trails adds extra force to your vehicle. You're not just smooth cruising along a road just like this. When you're off-road, you're more like this. 
So imagine the roof rack on top of this vehicle shaking like crazy. That's gonna reduce your rooftop load limit. Anyways, this information should be available from each specific roof rack manufacturer. Now for the FJ Cruiser, however, I've scoured the internet trying to find the capacity of the roof mounting points. And all I've been able to come up with is the capacity of the factory roof rack. Not helpful. I've not found any reliable information yet regarding the capacity of the FJ's roof mounting points. This is something for Toyota's engineering department. Toyota, if you're watching this, please put an answer down below. What's the load capacity of the roof mounting points on the FJ? What's the answer? If you're watching this and you have some insight on this, please comment below. So far, I've gone with a rating from my roof rack manufacturer and I've stayed within the load limits. I've been rolling around with this setup, which is a rooftop tent of about 150 pounds and an awning of about roughly 50 pounds for about three years now and I haven't experienced any issues yet. I've seen other similar setups and I haven't come across any FJ owners who've experienced their rack falling off. Anyways, this is an ongoing issue for me. I'll keep you guys up to date. Another important point about putting things on your roof rack is that it raises your center of mass. Your center of mass is the point in your vehicle where if you turn it to its side and you try and balance it on your finger, it will stay steady. Gah! You remember those birds? You know what I'm talking about. The birds that balance on your finger? How many of you had one of those birds? Those things were the pinnacle of my childhood. If you had one of those birds, hit subscribe. If this made you feel old, give me a like. Anyways, you always want a low center of mass for stability and safety. You know that feeling you get when you're making a high speed turn and you get thrown to one side? The low center of mass is designed to keep your FJ from toppling over. Now, as you add more and more weight to the roof, the center of mass gets higher and higher, making the FJ more susceptible to rolling. Even at its stock state, Toyota warns you that the FJ center of mass is higher than your typical vehicle. So don't be a hooligan. The moral of this story is, the less mass you put up onto your roof, the better. And now just 20 seconds of your time, I just wanna thank this list of amazing people that decided to donate to me on my coffee donation page. The list of supporters has been growing and I am once again dumbfounded. Thank you guys so much for your support. I can't say it enough. If you wanna support me as well, check my banner or the links in the description. This is what I do now full time, so I am so thankful for all of the support. Okay, the bumper. The stock bumper is just a whole bunch of plastic that wraps and protects a small crush bar. In my opinion, it offers minimal protection to your body and your frame. So I chose to go with a steel bumper to one, protect the FJ's body and frame in any unfavorable situation, and two, so I have a sturdy platform to mount a winch and off-road lights. Now, I've seen other people integrate a winch into the stock bumper, so that option's available too. But if you're looking to upgrade, there are a lot of options in the market in both steel and aluminum. It all depends on what your preference is for looks, functionality, and weight, as we discussed earlier. Weight is an important thing. I chose this bumper because it's not that heavy, coming in at 76 pounds. It's a high clearance bumper having a very large approach angle. It hides the winch way nicely and it's just very simple in its design. Next, we're gonna go on to vehicle armor. So I'm sure you've seen vehicles that are just stacked like absolute tanks. Although they look really cool, those setups are mainly geared for heavy and hardcore off-road situations where the chances of damaging your vehicle are really high. Because we're just talking about overlanding, nothing about heavy off-roading, I don't have too much vehicle armor aside from the steel bumper. At the very least, however, you still want to offer protection to your engine and your transmission because those are decently important things. It'd be a very good idea to grab yourself skid plates to protect those areas. For my FJ, I have aluminum skid plates and they've already taken a hit and they've performed exceptionally well. Other people have things like steel bumpers, rock sliders, tubing to protect the entire body of your vehicle, and even underside plating from the front all the way to the back. And these are all very cool features, but whatever you decide to go with, keep in mind the weight that you're adding to the vehicle as a result of this. Remember, you wanna stay within your GVM limits. Okay, so now we're gonna look at your FJ Cruiser's breathers. So the creators of the FJ didn't assume that you were gonna use your FJ to do river crossings or go swimming or scuba diving in mud. Therefore, the breather position for your rear differential, rear e-locker, transfer case, and transmission sit fairly low on your vehicle. In my opinion, the front differential breather is the only breather that's positioned high enough 
you have your rear differential breather that just sits on top of the bell housing and directly on top of that hanging on a cross member is your rear e-locker breather. The transfer case breather is extended and routed to the engine bay and it is clipped on the back of the engine block between the engine and the firewall. It's a tiny gap. You're going to need some small hands to go and find it. And then the transmission breather, which is just a nub that sits on top of the transmission casing. So if you know that you'll be doing deep water crossings, it's probably worth your while to do a modification to these breathers and extend them all up to the engine bay. For my modifications, I only extended the rear differential, the rear differential e-locker, and the transfer case breathers. I would have done the transmission breather as well, but there's no way to access it unless you drop the transmission. I've said in the past that I'd be doing a detailed video about this breather mod, so as soon as that gets finished, I'll be putting a video link up here. The last thing is the snorkel. Now, <laughs> this upgrade is not for the faint of heart. This requires drilling into the body of your FJ. <gasps> I know, scary stuff. It's even scarier than Y2K. So your stock air intake already sits pretty high on your FJ Cruiser. But in the name of being prepared for everything, having a snorkel will ensure that your engine does not suck in any water in case you get dropped into the ocean. No, not the ocean in case you do a deep water crossing and it was deeper than you expected. At some point, I'm probably gonna upgrade to a snorkel as well because I've had some pretty close calls. Anyways, that's it for this topic, guys. I'll be covering the rest on this list in upcoming videos. Comment below if there's anything that I've stupidly missed because I'm dumb. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for the support. I'll see you guys next week.